Hmm. Ooh, this one is cute. Add to cart. Now let's look for a chair. Hmm. Oh, this one is perfect. Add to cart. And you know what the best part is? It's a write off. What is up guys, my name is Tyra and if you are a small business owner, self-employed or a gig worker, welcome to Keeper Tax, your one-stop shop for all things 1099 taxes. Here on this channel, we create resources for freelancers, independent contractors, gig workers and anyone else who files or should be filing business taxes. Welcome to Tax Myths, where I debunk random tax rules that you may have heard out here in these streets. The myths that we will discuss in this segment have been plaguing gig workers and freelancers forever, and honestly, they are just so confusing. But as you know, I am here to give you the tax content you need to set yourself up for success, honey. In today's video, we will be talking about claiming a home office. Many people think claiming a home office puts you at risk for an audit, so let's dive in. Every year, more and more people are concerned that taking a home office deduction isn't worth the risk because the deduction could trigger an IRS audit. But if you qualify for the home office deduction, I'm going to tell you now, do not ignore it. This whole home office deduction triggers an audit thing is an urban myth. But where does this myth even come from? Long story short, the IRS is on the lookout for fraud. Of course, the IRS uses a computer system known as the Discriminant Information Function, or the DIF. This system checks your tax returns and compares them to other people who do the same job or are in the same profession as you. So, for example, if you are a freelance stunt driver and you claim a home office when basically no one else in the same profession does the same thing, this will raise some red flags for the IRS and may increase your risk of an audit. But still y'all, don't let this deter you as long as you are following the rules and keeping good records. You should definitely take advantage of this deduction if it applies to you. Because let me tell you, if you aren't taking advantage of it because you think it's too risky, Baby, you are leaving money on the table and we don't do that over here. Who qualifies for the home office deduction? In order to qualify for the home office deduction, you must be a taxpayer that falls into one of three groups. You are self-employed, you are an independent contractor, or you work in the gig economy. You do not qualify for a home office deduction if you are an employee, meaning you receive a paycheck or W-2 from an employer. So if you're watching this video and you think the home office deduction is for you, but you don't know where to start with your write-offs, make sure you go check out the video that I did in the Tax University series on home office deductions, where I give you a rundown on the expenses you can write off as a home office deduction. You can find this video in our playlist or click the link in the description bar down below. And we even have this really cool quiz that you can take on our website that will tell you if you qualify for the home office deduction and the link will be down below as well. Now, if you did watch our tax university video, you know what you can deduct. So now we're gonna talk about how much we can deduct. There are two methods you can use to calculate your deduction amount. We have the simplified method and the regular method. The simplified method gives you $5 per square foot of your home office, up to $1,500. You should consider using this method if record keeping and documentation is not your strong suit. Then there's the regular method, which does require you to keep a log of your expenses. To use the regular method, you will add up your qualified home office expenses and multiply that by the percentage of your home that is taken up by your home office. And let me explain how to find that percentage real quick. So let's say your home office is 10 feet by eight feet. That's 80 square feet. If you live in a 500 square foot apartment, 80 square feet divided by 500 square feet is 16%. Because your home office is 16% of your entire apartment, you can write off 16% of all your qualified home expenses. Now, I bet you're wondering which method should I pick? 
Well, the regular method will almost always save you more money on taxes than the simplified method, and I'm gonna give you guys an example to show you what I mean. So let's say you rent a one bedroom apartment in a city and your apartment is about 600 square feet with a 100 square foot home office. And let's say on average you're paying $800 per month for rent. On top of that, you gotta pay for Wi-Fi, renter's insurance, all of your utilities, which add up to at least, let's go with $150 a month. In this case, you should use the regular method and here is why. With the simplified method, you will get $5 per square foot of your 100 square foot home office, giving you a tax write-off of $500. But if you use the regular expense method, you will be able to write off $1,934 because you have the $800 rent plus $150 for your utilities. You times that by 12 months and multiply that by 17%, which is the total percentage of your home that is your home office, which will give you that $1,934. Y'all, please don't leave that much money on the table. If you'd like to see more examples of the simplified or regular method, you can check out our blog post that I linked down below and it goes through what the math looks like if you own a home in the suburbs or the countryside. And the interesting thing is the regular method still comes out ahead. So the bottom line is claiming actual home related expenses is almost always better than using the simplified method. And if you're worried about the record keeping side of things, the Keeper Tax app can do that for you automatically. So make sure you check it out. It's all linked down below in the description box. In the comments below, please let me know if you have any questions about anything mentioned in this video. And also let me know in the comments if you have heard any kind of tax myth that you're not sure is true. That's all that I have for you guys today. If you would like more easy to digest tax content, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below and make sure your notifications are on so you can get all of the alerts and stay up to date with all things self-employed taxes. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.